A lot of us start out trying to answer the question, which gun should I carry? So what I'm going to attempt to do in this video is to share with you all the guns I've carried over the years, why I chose them, what purpose they served, and why I stopped or continue to carry them. So my first gun was indeed a little revolver for the little lady. I got a Smith & Wesson Model 36 in 2018. I didn't lay out on this gun because it was chosen for me, but I did have help choosing it after having shot a few other common semi-automatics like the Glock 19, as well as a larger revolver. At the time, I'd probably not shot more than 200 rounds in my entire life. And for some reason, the movement of the slide alone kind of freaked me out and shooting a revolver was just a lot more comfortable for me at that level. That sat in our safe until like 2019 when I finally did decide that I wanted to in fact carry a gun. By then I had become more comfortable with the idea of the slide reciprocating and wanted to carry something without a cylinder. I had it in my head for some reason that the cylinder was gonna be too thick to carry inside the waistband. Unfortunately, deciding to get a new concealed carry gun meant selling the revolver. And to this day, I, I really wish that we hadn't sold it. It was a great little gun. And I think that I probably would have wound up carrying it eventually had we not sold it. My second concealed carry gun and the first one I actually wound up carrying was the Glock 42. To choose that gun, I didn't take to the Facebook groups for questions or even watch YouTube reviews. We already owned a Glock 19 and that's what I'd done most of my shooting with. So the Glock platform sort of just felt like a given to me. So the choice for me at the time was between the Glock 43 and the Glock 42. And if you don't know the differences between those two, the 42 has a shorter barrel, is slimmer and is chambered in 380, whereas the Glock 43 has a slightly longer barrel and is chambered in nine millimeter. Honestly, to this day, I still feel like the Glock 42 was the absolute best gun I could have chosen for myself at the time for two reasons. I was not a skilled or confident shooter by any stretch of the imagination when we bought the Glock 42. I chose it because it was easy to shoot and because it was small. The Glock 42 helped facilitate my learning of shooting fundamentals without the fatigue and frustration often brought on by the recoil of similarly sized nine millimeter pistols. And two, I also wasn't a skilled concealed carrier as in I knew nothing about how to hide a gun on my body. I tried all kinds of holsters thinking that I could buy concealment and ultimately wound up just dressing around my pistol. And being that I'm already a small person to begin with, there's not a whole lot of real estate on my frame for just hiding a gun. So the fact that I started with a very slim framed Glock, certainly worked in my favor as I struggled through the concealment learning curve. <laughs> my full Glock 42 setup included the following. Glock 42, a striker control device, a mirror glow night sights, and I did have a mag extension. Now though, when I carry the same Glock 42, I use a flush standard OEM magazine with six plus one, rounds of Hornady Critical Defense. Now, my next pistol was the Glock 48 MOS, very different from the Glock 42. And I switched that in mid to late 2020. This was also my first pistol that I added a red dot to. When I went to the range to select a new carry gun, I was doing so because one, I wanted to be able to use a nine millimeter so that training ammunition would be less expensive. We all remember what those ammo prices were like in 2022, or not 2022, it's 2022 right now, right now. They're actually pretty great right now. But yeah, we all remember what those ammo prices were back in 2020. So two, because I wanted a higher magazine capacity for carrying, training, and competing purposes. And three, because I had allowed the internet to make me feel self-conscious about my choice to carry a 380. Now, I'm not going to say that you shouldn't listen to people on the internet because sometimes they are actually providing real and helpful information. But in this case, I was hearing people say things like stopping power and that 380 didn't have the stopping power magic that nine millimeter does. And all I wanna say about that is that yes, there are measurable ballistic differences between 380 and nine millimeter. However, 380 is still a viable option with acceptable performance, especially when you carefully select good carry ammunition. Shot placement, that's also a thing. <laughs> and if someone can maintain a higher level of accuracy with a 380, then I will encourage them to carry that 
over a nine millimeter any day of the week because a 380 to this portion of the target is more better than nine millimeter to this portion of the target, full stop. Okay, back to the regularly scheduled non-ranting program. So away I went with the Glock 48 MOS, adding a striker control device, um, a Holosun 507K, this is a 407K now, but I added the 507K at the time and I got Shield Arms magazines um, and the magazine catch to go with it. The Glock 48 wound up kind of changing just about everything for me. This trusty gun has seen upwards of 10,000 rounds. I've used it in all of my live fire training, all of my shooting competitions and carried it exclusively for over a year. Pretty quickly after I got the Glock 48, it became very apparent to me that I wasn't going to be able to just continue simply dressing around the gun the way that I had been with my Glock 42. The Glock 48 is an absolutely huge gun for my frame to conceal. And it's the largest thing I've ever, I'd ever really want to carry as a comparison, it doesn't really do it justice. Being that I was determined to carry it and effectively conceal it, I was forced to learn actual concealment mechanics. All my dressing around the gun experience did come in handy though, because the Glock 48 is so big on my frame that it requires me to not only throw the book of concealment mechanics at it, but to also dress around it. So for over a year, I did just that until I grew weary of carrying a gun that took up 67% of my hip to hip distance. For reference, people usually start struggling with concealment once they surpass 40% of their hip to hip distance. And it was ultimately the concealment challenges that led me to seek out yet another concealed carry gun at the end of 2021. And in come the P365 series. The P365 series was the most obvious choice. I didn't even really take the time to consider much of anything else. There was already a ton of holster support for it. The grip shape itself is less blocky and more concealable than Glock soap bar shape. And they're pretty affordable. And it was then that I had to choose between the P365, the P365X, or the P365XL. And the X quickly became the most obvious choice because, and bear with me here, at the time, the standard P365 was not optics ready. So I went with the P365X, bought a standard P365 grip module for 50 bucks and a small magazine to go with it in order to create my very own optics ready P365 without having to send it out for custom milling. Now in 2023, you can simply just buy an optics ready P365 from the factory. Good job, Sig. Right out of the gate though, I was pretty bummed about my shooting performance with it. Even though I'd put about 300-ish rounds through a P365 here and there over the years. After getting one and comparing my performance with the Glock 48 to the P365, I was super disappointed. And who wouldn't be? We all want our micro gun performance to be right up there with our full size gun performance. And yes, I realize that the Glock 48 is not a full size gun, but for these hands, it might as well be. So uh, I began my journey of customizing the P365 to my needs. At the end of the day though, it's really just taken getting more comfortable with the platform in general. Anytime you switch from one gun to a drastically different gun, especially a smaller one, there will likely be some amount of performance loss there, but the performance gap can often grow smaller as we dry fire and put work in on the range. The P365 is still a small and admittedly snappy nine millimeter pistol, but it's serving my needs for right now. With that said though, I might just start carrying a... So to sum up the entirety of this video, the Glock 42 was my first carry gun back in 2019. And to this day, I still think it was the best choice for me at the time. The Glock 48 facilitated so much of my learning process with all of the features from the larger size to the striker control device, to the addition of an optic and the higher capacity shield arms mags. But ultimately it wound up becoming too much gun for me to comfortably conceal on my frame. The P365 is small enough for me to conceal reliably and is serving me well at the moment. If you're still here, Thank you for watching and don't forget to please leave a comment below. I just shared my entire concealed carry lineup, every gun that I've ever carried or considered carrying. So now I wanna hear about yours.